Welcome back to Jeff Green Angry Live here at Citizen Television. What an incredible, interesting conversation we're having with the best of the best of media. That's right, because today is World Press Freedom Day. We'll talk about our freedoms here in Kenya. As much as we think we have all the press freedoms, uh, sometimes we're getting our, we feel we're getting our wings clipped. And we've got Olo Janak, we've got Zubeda Kanan, we've got Dr. Harun Wang, we've got Eric Odwar, we've got Patience Nyange right here talking about these issues. And Eric, I heard you earlier on at the media event talking about how even some owners <laughs> hold their employees ransom or they treat them as... Uh, slaves. I actually I use the word right. slaves so you because use? actually it has been stated and I've seen my boss in the trade unions uh, seated here, uh, Francis Atwolin, <laughs> and he said yes. that the media is the headquarters of he slavery in Kenya because uh, we are having a situation where we have got staff who go for months without pay and nobody's talking about it, nobody wants to talk about it and nobody wants to listen, about, uh, to, listen to it. So what we are saying is this, that for us to have meaningful discussion about press freedom, let us have these internal issues sorted out because you can't go out there and say we have press freedom but you haven't paid this person because economic freedom is very important as much as press freedom is also important. So let us say, what are the media houses doing? Mm. Can we start have the discussion so that we can have pay structure in the media house? Have you been talking this, about this, Eric? Have yes, I've done that. I've done that. And whenever I talk about this, people think that I'm a madman. Mm. People say that, oh, you know, uh, we have got different contracts. Today, I was just talking to a journalist who was injured during the demonstrations. And when this journalist went to meet the HR, the HR told, them that, uh, told him that, you know, you are employed in this company as a contractor, an independent contractor, and therefore he is not treated as a staff. He was injured in line of duty. The, the company can't even pay for his medical bills. So this guy has to go into his own pocket and start fundraising. I also talked about a journalist who is on uh, in a hospital bed who was sacked yesterday by the employer. So that means that even if you're talking about the people who are infringing on the rights of journalists, but it also is happening inside here. Why can't we start having this discussion about having the rights of journalists respected within the media houses by ensuring they are given proper tools of trade, they are properly remunerated, they are properly protected, so that when they go out there, that is when also the, uh, the, the public will also respect them. But if you're having a journalist who haven't been paid for five months, how will he be respected out there in the eyes of the public? Who the public also respect because they hold us in, in high esteem. But you go there, you are looking broke. You are, you are, your lips are dry. <laughs> yes, you are hungry, you are weak. How will these people respect you? <laughs> exactly, so we have to start it. So because yeah. these are the faces of the media house. You are the object of sympathy. Hold on, yes. hold on, hold on. And you will be at the mercy of the politicians. Exactly. So yeah. see you're hungry. And of course, and, and, and they only give you much. They'll give you 500. Bus. That will, because so that you go again tomorrow. Because again, you so that you <laughs> remain a slave. That's what I'm saying. You are a slave to the media house. You are a slave to the politicians. You are a slave to the people you are serving out there. So when you go out there and say, ah, this is better, but you look, you look broke. Mm. You are angry. You've not eaten for two days. So these people are able to see the person we are serving as here, the person we are holding in high esteem, kumbe in hot air. That's what they say. In hot air, they wouldn't respect you. Mm. So that was saying that yeah. we must have start also discussions within the media industry. How can we develop pay structure so that everybody feels protected, everybody is properly remunerated? Because by the end of the day, journalism is just work and profession just like any other. So that if you go out there, you are able to take care of your bills. Let me say two things. Go on, Doc. Number one is that uh, if you compare journalism in Africa with the journalism in uh, Europe, there is one key distinction. Journalism in Europe is funded by foundations and be philanthropists. Now, journalism in Kenya is funded by pure businessmen. Mm -hmm. And if you ask yourself how much money for, or the returns from the for, uh, of the companies goes to actually journalism, how much money? If you look in terms of budgeting, you find that there is significant, insignificant amount that goes to journalism. But we also have another problem. Are journalism part of negotiation and do they know even how much money is allocated to them in the budgets? Do they know that? Do they participate even in the budgeting processes? They don't. And therefore, they are left in the dark. If the company makes millions of shillings and they just allocate about 2% 
to the to the journalism. Then it means that journalism is not uh, is not growing, and that has been one of the problem. One of the key thing that came from the from the GAA is that the money that the money was paid by GAA to the media houses, and the media houses continue claiming that the money has not been paid. Well, let's, uh, GAA is Government Advertising yes. Agency for those they, who don't of, know. Yes, yeah. they have paid, yes, but already the owners have diverted that money, mm. and there's little that has gone to journalism, not even salaries, not even allowances. And therefore... Where does it go? Of course, now to other investment by the, the owner. The question and is, you know, who owns Jeff, the media? I think that's where we need to go back to the drawing board. Mm. You know, this issue touches on two aspects. There is media sustainability and editorial independence, on the other hand. So when you don't pay your staff or when you... I know KEG, our constitution doesn't give us the powers to negotiate remuneration, and but it's a conversation that we need to have. So when you don't pay your staff or when you retrench your staff, you know, because most we've lost hundreds of journalists in the last couple of weeks, where is the problem? Where is the missing link? Is it that you're not getting money from the, the advertising, the advertising revenue, and all that? Yeah. Is it a management issue? We need to sit down and analyze and see where the gaps are. Because you can't just say, oh, we don't have money. You know, sometimes the question that comes up is that, oh, but we saw a commercial the other day. You know, so how do you tell us? How do you tell us that you don't, you don't have money to pay your staff? Mm. So we need to sit down and look at this conflict that is uh, eminent in our newsrooms right now to see where the problem is. Is it a management issue? How do we handle it? And Kenya Media Sector Working Group has been going around the newsrooms trying to speak to the heads of those newsrooms or media houses to try and identify where the problem is. On the other hand, there is the issue of commercial interest and editorial independence. So what are our priorities as a newsroom or media houses? What do we stand for? It takes us back to the conversation we had earlier. Who are our clients? Who should be our priority as media houses? The audience. And you know, we've been having this conversation all saying, oh, advertisers have gone to social media. Yes, statistics show that we have like 21.7 million people who've shifted to social media. Have we asked ourselves why everybody has shifted to social media? Why ha are our audiences shifting to social media? What are we doing about it? it falls back to that editorial judgment. When, yes, we want money, but we need to have policies in place that draws that balance. That, yes, we want commercial, we want advertising, but also we need to serve our number one client, who is the audience. Why are, have people shifted to social media? The, you know, this is a, a conversation that we need to have. Like, what content are we giving them? Are we giving them a reason to come back home and watch us? There are times that everybody would rush. There would be traffic because everybody is rushing home to watch Dito Pevu, to watch Case Files, to watch, you know, and it brings back the conversation you raised on investigative and journalism. Jake, Jake are we enticing the public? Are we appealing to them? Are we giving them content? Are we giving them value for their money? Right. You know, we need to to think about that as well. Yeah. So that it brings yeah. back the advertising that we've lost to sure. social media. Sure. Let's draw them back. Let's sit down and see where the gaps are and try to seal those gaps. Patience because deep. we can't just complain about audiences leaving, mm -hmm. but we're not giving nothing. them value for their time. And sure. again, editorial independence, when we say, let's kill that bulletin, let's kill that story, let's not air that story because that is our client, and maybe it's a story of public interest, that's how we lose it. Yes, so when we talk about uh, media sustainability, editorial independence, editorial judgment. We need to sit down and see how are our revenue streams. Have we reviewed our rate cuts, for example, so that the, instead of that client going to social media, they come back to us. You can't charge uh, a client, for example, two million shillings and on social media where there is a bigger audience, they are paying, I think, 100,000 and so. So we need to go back and review our policies and how we do things in the newsroom to be able to pull back our advertising mm. and advertisers and our audiences 
so that we make money that we will be able to sustain us, that we will be able to pay our bills, that we will be able to pay our salaries as well. Absolutely. So it's up to us to go back to the drawing board and see where the gaps are. Okay, patience. Well, I think media viability and media sustainability is a big conversation, which I'm not sure if we start now we will be able to finalize on this conversation. Mm. And also I want to believe that the, the, the shrinking media space has affected how business is done now. And even the business models as they are, you know, the emergence of digitization technology is also something that we must, I don't have to be home at seven to watch news, but I watch news every day. Whether I get home at 11, I get home at midnight, I will still be able to go to YouTube and watch Jeff if I didn't watch you at, you know, at, uh, at 10.30. I'll still, I'll go back to my smart TV and just, you know, rewind all the way and watch news. So that is really, I mean, it's changing. The business models are changing. And therefore the question is, are we adopting adequately? Are media houses <coughs> being able to change and to think and to rethink their models? Have we stuck to the same place that we imagine that people have to be home at seven to watch news, that everyone is rushing? In Nairobi, you have to manage traffic jams, you have to manage, I mean, letter was at work, you have to be, I mean, my, when I was living here, my mom asked me, but patience, what time will you be home? This show goes until midnight. <laughs> I said, I'll be home at, at midnight, mommy. <laughs> I mean, because that's really, the, agree, that, that's I the agree. situation as it is. I agree, I agree but you I see mean, now. For, for a long time, we imagine that, you know, news has to be at seven, news has to be at nine, <laughs> but it's changing. And as we're changing, we must also sit down and start restructuring ourselves and looking at, as we're thinking about the audience, what is, how, how is that audience also behaving? Have their lives changed with, you know, the emergence of new trends within the media system with the emergence of their own, you know, lives? People change. When I was young, well, we watched news at seven because they didn't have much of a choice. Now I don't need to watch news at nine. I can sit down in the morning at, you know, seven and watch last night's news. Mm. And it's still possible. So I think for us also it's a challenge to the media houses and media owners and everyone else who is working within this industry as we're thinking about the changing shifts and the sh changing trends um, in all sectors. It's not just the media sector that is being affected civil we, I mean in the civil space civil society space we're talking about the shrinking civil society space it is a concern for everyone but as they're changing there are other things that are coming on board and there are more interests that are coming on board the funding that has been there it's not that it has changed interests have shifted mm. and as the interests shift then the media too need to rethink their models think through the business models as well but Doctor, okay go on. I, want, I want to say that um, the basic principle of journalism still uh, remain People still want to consume the, our products. What it is that we need to do? What we need to do is to ensure that we give value for the money because we are going for pay for content. If you look at the best um, business models that actually are, are working, other than um, the journalism being supported by foundations and the trust like uh, uh, Dr. Mwangi has said, but also it has to be supplemented by pay for content. We are no longer relying on advertising as the main revenue stream for the media. So how that is supposed to happen? That's what I'm saying we need to have journalists who are properly remunerated, who are able to produce content which you can associate with. Content that if you are told to buy, subscribe, you will buy and you will get value for your money. But we've covered a situation whereby nowadays if you go into newsroom, newsrooms are literally empty. There are no people there who can collectively because of course they are journalists there but it's come a situation where, where, where you need quality and quality you can't expect one journalist to do 10 20 stories in a day you will compromise quality you need a journalist who can sit down and dedicate his or her time in a story you produce a story that if you put it on a paywall you will be able to get your investment in that story. But we are getting a situation whereby we are coming with different models where we want to exploit journalists more than pay them less. But instead of having quality journalism in newsroom, who will get you a return on investment? You invest in a story that if you put it out there, even me, I will be happy to pay. This is the question I ask the media uh, managers. If you are to buy this story, will you buy it? Will you subscribe to it? But why are you having You're having it because this is what you can do. You refuse to invest in investigative journalism. You are doing a story that even I'll get it on the blogs, I'll get it on social media for free. Why should I subscribe to it? But we are going to, uh, to an era whereby you pay for the content. And that is the model that actually has been proven that is working elsewhere. You give me content that I can be happy with, content that I'll get value for my money, and I pay. 
rather than having content that is paid for by advertisers. So that is the shift that mm. we have. Yeah. Dr. Mwangi. <coughs> yes, yes, I, I agree that uh, the content is a king. And I also agree that uh, globally, the returns uh, on, um, on media has really gone down, actually globally, by 45%. Uh -huh. That's too much. Mm. A combination of the returns for nation and uh, standard has gone down by 45%. That's huge. That means that uh, they have to retrench, and uh, the news now are uh, all black-haired. You can never see a gray-haired man or a woman in the newsroom, yeah. meaning that there is no mentorship that is now possible within the newsroom. And therefore, the content has also suffered. And once the content suffers, it means that it is the, it is, it is the, it is the, the consumer really that doesn't get what he really wants. And therefore, journalism must be constructive. And there's a very, very strong relation between journalism, sustainability, and construction and constructive journalism. That means that the content my brother is talking about must be the content that speaks and resonates with the citizens. And I said earlier that it is not just the content that is of public interest, but it is a content that the public is interested in. That should be the focus that uh, we should give to the new model of, of journalism. Yeah. The community journalism is key. And of course, as she said, today we have seen a very narrow distinction between the editorial and commercial. Mm. So that anybody now, if you want to go back to the university, you go to Stradimo to start a business. You are chief editor for Media House. Why is, that so? Why is it so? Because you really have to look at how do I sustain the business. Initially, these two people could not meet or these departments could not meet. Okay, there was kind of tension which was held that time. But now, the, the two, the two, the editorial and business are just like operating like one. And therefore, that independence that my sister is talking about is completely narrowing. And therefore, the content is highly defined by the commercial return, mm -hmm. that particular content. Mm -hmm. So that is a model that we are looking for. Oh, Lord Janak, let me ask you this real quick. Um, is that, does that mean we're becoming redundant like 5, 10, 15 years from now? We won't be here. No, no, I think, I think if, if, if the media, th there's a rethinking, you know. Uh, uh, let me just give you, for example, when devolution set in, when the new constitution, you know, uh, you know set in, I had a huge argument within the media industry, and I was then at the media council, and I said, uh, we, had a, uh, we had a big media conference, and I said, guys, first, within the new constitutional framework, the media must respond to the changed governance environment, mm. devolution, and so on. I mean, there are people who laughed it off. So we remain Nairobi-centric, even in terms of how we report. We are talking about traffic in Nairobi, which the guys in the village don't care about. They have never seen a car. They, they are actually, they are actually the, the, the road, the road has uh, cereals, you know, drying, and they haven't seen a car for, um, for, for the last uh, two weeks or something. Mm -hmm. Now, we report the, the mainstream media, the print, for example, are covering the counties in two pages, a brief here, a brief there. Who will buy that kind of paper? See that, eh? Mm. So, so we have lost it in terms of responding to certain changes that, that have come. For example, right now, if we are talking about, I, I, our colleagues here have talked about, uh, we, we can't say that the media does not have money, or the media houses. In many, many other countries, if you make profits, you must be able to, to keep money for, for a rainy day. Where have all the profits been going? If they are paid by government advertising agency, I mean, this came recently. Mm -hmm. the, the advertising has been there before, and of course the, 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 the pie has been big, largely from government and the corporate sector. If it comes every year and they have been declaring profits, where do they take the money? Isn't it reinvested? It means, therefore, that the news aspect of the media is not treated seriously as a, as a public service. They want to raise money through uh, the news and all these other things about journalism, but they want to take the money elsewhere. They want to sponsor a golf tournament. They want to sponsor something else, you know, and, and, and champagne in hotels. When, the, when, when for example, the, you know, the journalists, who are the, the, the key people, the, the human resource is not treated properly, then you lose it. You see that, eh? Yeah. So, so uh, I don't think that essentially the media will collapse in this country. Obviously, some will, okay? Yeah. But I think there is a wake-up call right now and a, a, some kind of re-engineering that is happening in different media houses, even belatedly. 
Uh, I think people are watching JK, JK live. Yes. And they will probably tell us the rates and so on and, and what the kind of uh, audience that, uh, you know. <laughs> I, I see people, people even now, even young people, I've seen them tweeting and doing that and, you know, waiting to hear what we are, we are talking about. It means there's some value. You see that? You are bringing some value. Right. JK Live is bringing some value. Now, that is what every media house should think about. What value are you bringing to society? Uh, over the last five, six years, uh, you know, there, there are sections of this country who have been saying, ah, very media. Mm. No, why are they saying media? They still call us that. Yeah, it is because they are saying that we are being mundane. We, we are focusing on the more mundane things and not focusing on what the people think. Oh, the last two days, for example, I have questions here. The, the med people are saying, why didn't the media cover Manda Mano yesterday? We have not been talking about that. What happened? Jeff. You see that? Good point. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so in, in, in rounding off that point, I'm saying that the media is going to survive, but we must think very hard about uh, responding to uh, you know, public expectations. Yeah. And By the way, yeah. although we, yeah. we covered the yeah. Mandamano, just yeah. for the record, yeah. we, we covered it. We yeah. were all over there. Briefly, Jeff. Yeah, well, yeah not, all, not what, all media houses. <laughs> on what you asked him, yes. I think as media, we need, you know, right now, news is consumed on the go. As she said, she won't rush home at 7 o'clock to watch news. So it's up to us as media houses to curate content that can be consumed on the go without waiting for the audience to come sit down and watch news on TV. Right. And you know, we have the advantage of technology. You know, you can cut short clips and share, short stories and share. And I'm happy that many media houses right now have digital um, uh, departments, you know? So instead of cutting clips from what has been discussed here on JKL, why don't we identify a team that will uh, work on stories that will appeal to the masses out there instead of just posting what has aired on mainstream media. So we need to rethink. We need to embrace technology and use it to our advantage. And that comes with the kind of stories that we share out there. You know, we are, we are in competition with social media right now. People are rushing there because they get different stories. They get in interesting stories, you know, that excites them throughout the day. So why can't we do the same? Let's embrace technology. Let's curate and diversify our content. You know, and you know when when you post a story there, it should be to the point and something that one can click and get all the information, get all the education they need. <coughs> but, but, but we can't just sit and expect everybody to come back to to watch us on TV. Let's. Let's ensure that they are watching us on the go. And Jeff, it's about Jeff, how Jeff. we package our, uh, our stories yeah. and the kind of stories that we share on social. That's where we're having a problem mm. because it has always been the game of numbers. Mm. So even if whoever is going on digital platforms, is going on uh, to the uh, social media, is chasing non-existent numbers. What we need to do is let us add value to the society. That is what will help us. Mm. The media that will add value to the society, that is the media that is going to survive. Mm. But the media that is, face, is chasing non-existent numbers on digital platform and social media is facing problems. What we need to do, let us invest in quality journalism. Let us invest in our journalists to produce content that is what people are looking for so that even if patients leave this place at midnight but she's looking for the quality content from jkl life mm -hmm. so that even if it is 2 a.m she'll watch it so yeah. much. but if you are chasing non-existent numbers nobody will follow that so that, the, the that, that is, is my point the world has shifted to social yeah. media and we need to live to, to that that's what i'm saying even know? if you're going to social media madam president <coughs> yes these people are looking for quality content there. Yes, quality, and it's not factual, about yes, it's not yes. about the numbers. Yeah. It's about quality. the what content. Sharing, yes. Are you adding value mm. to my life? Why yeah. should I watch your show? Why should I consume your content? Mm. That is the question. Speak, so, yes. Yes. Speaking what? of quality, speaking yes. of quality, let's see what our audience thinks. Okay. Okay. Let me go to the magic let's, wall uh, almost, and see what they think of this show. Be there. And mm. of this, you guys. All the competition. Mm. Yeah. Yes, you are. I see there. Uh -huh. Marco Seno, Doctari says, media fraternity in Kenya has made tremendous gains in ensuring freedom of press compared to our neighbors. More effort must be on safety to avert what we saw in Mandamano, a country with no media visibility is a dead country. Mm -hmm.
Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> you said that Mboya yeah. Odiambo says, great conversation on media freedom. We need media and information literacy to empower the public to understand and appreciate the role of the media. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Steve Karimi says, Kenyan press is not without blame. Ethical reporting is a foreign concept to our journalists. <laughs> Many press people sell their souls to the highest bidder, especially when it comes to political analysis <laughs> and reporting. <laughs> wow. Agreed. Wow. Agreed. You agree, yes, Patience? I do. Yes. Kiplimo Timothy says, journalists out there are silently suffering with meager pay accompanied by huge responsibilities. <laughs> Where will objectivity come from if you are hungry and angry? We should have a standard pay for journalists. Eric, that's what you're alluding to, yeah, right? Exactly. When you're looking dry, your <laughs> lips are dry. Yes, you are <laughs> <laughs> you've not eaten for two days. And, Correct. An angry yes. journalist is a dangerous journalist. Exactly. <laughs> Stanfield Morrill says, Kenyan journalists are in a situation of damned if you do, damned if you don't. Mm -hmm. They become the enemy or friends depending on what the consumer wants to hear or read. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm -hmm. Abdul Taraja says, all in all, the role of the media and journalists must be respected and accorded necessary protection all the way, despite their own shortcomings. Mm -hmm. We cannot afford to mm -hmm. kill it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good point. Erastus Wayne says, there's a lot of negativity, or rather a lot of negative environmental issues, but since it's not newsworthy, it's usually brushed off. How can we have the media, a more responsible institution, preventing such impacts, but rather drive the changes on solutions that should be delivered by the GOK? Yeah, if it bleeds, it leads. Remember that's what they yeah. say? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Khalid Kibet says, there's a thin line between the media being objective and impartial and the media interfering with active investigations. This might compromise justice. Media must draw the line. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. There's one more. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. with that one. Mm. Th this story Omele. would not have come out if it was not for the media. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Amela Vincent says, love it or hate it, there's no institution that binds and informs the society more than the media. As a whole, let's focus more and maintain truthful reporting and unbiased journalism. Mm, good. Interesting viewpoints. Thank you so much for your feedback, folks. Folks, we have about maybe three, four minutes left. I'm going to go around the room and we get final thoughts. Patience, we start with you. Well, I think we have a responsibility as media people. Uh, res rights come with responsibility. We are in an industry or in a business that has a very key role to play in the society. And as we do that, we must do our work ethically. We must do our work with uh, decorum. We must be able to observe the code of ethics that guides the work that we do. On the other hand, we demand respect. We demand to be respected in the work that we do. We demand protection from set organs, we demand protection from employers, uh, from media owners, and collectively here with you, starting with you, you must make a commitment to see that this conversation continues. It's not a one-off conversation that happens because we're celebrating World Press Freedom Day, but let's ensure that as we report about everything else and anything else, let's also see that the conversation around journalism is also a conversation that is being done across the media houses. Absolutely. Do you make the commitment? <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Okay. Totally agree. Eric. So, Jeff, uh, Jeff, briefly two things. Number one, uh, let us protect the gains that we have. Let us uh, improve uh, what on uh, what we have. Let us not destroy what we have already have. Then number two, <coughs> media employers, please pay your journalists. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. Yeah. Yes, that's done. Short Dr. Short. Haran Mwangi. Yes. We must appreciate the centrality of media in our society. We must appreciate that media is an important institution in building our democracy and in protecting human rights as well as development. We must appreciate media. Absolutely, appreciate media. Zumeida. Kabisa. Niseme kwanza, kwa nini atuja ungea kiswahili? Si umeongea, si uongea basi. Kwa nini atuja tuma salamu? 
Wameru Ni lazima tusimamie uhuru wetu kama wanahabari. There's a lot. Okay. Watch me rule it to be proud of and to celebrate. We've come from so far. There's a lot that we are doing that we will not be uh, be able to do a while back. So there's a lot to celebrate. Lakini vile vile ni muhimu tuheshimiane. Kila mtu atambue haki zake za kimsingi ni gani na atekeleze haki hizo bila kukiuka haki za mtu mwingine. Vyombo vya habari vinahitaji kuheshimiwa. Wanahabari tujizatiti katika kazi zetu. Let's train our journalists especially kama hivi mambo ya kukava mambo ya maandamano na kadhalika tuhakikishe kwamba we are investing in our journalists let's train them let's empower them let's create a safe space for them so that they feel at home so that they give their all kwa sababu kama haujapewa ile motisha hautawekeza katika kile chombo kwa hivyo let's invest in our journalists let's fight for our space let's stand for the truth and let's review our policies to see Uh, that we have a four back plan when all these things happen unajua kuna ile mtaenda mjitetee that like they were saying oh kwa nini journalist mlikuwa kwa gari na siasa na kadhalika let's have policies that are clear because there is a report that was released okay it will be launched very soon um, through partnership with Kenya Editors Guild yenye inaangalia the policies that we have in our newsroom do we have policies do they exist do the staff know that there are these policies that guide them or should guide them on what they do or what they stand for so there is a lot to learn from everything that is happening so let's go back to angalie tatizo liko wapi and review and improve where necessary lakini la msingi tuheshimu haki na uhuru wa vyombo vya habari na nawavulia kofia wanahabari wote nchini kwa kazi ambayo mnaifanya sasa tuma salamu kwa watu wenu wa Meru. Oh, Antobeto bami. Hello, you get the last word. Three things. One is that this is a very important day and I want to salute all the journalists and especially the the the, the, the Kenya Correspondents Media Network that took the marking of this day to the counties. In about 15 counties today, they were able to sensitize. If you are talking about uh, media literacy, mm. it was out there in the counties and we saw on national television that it was marked across. Yeah. So a salute to all the journalists out there in the counties that did something towards that. Now, the second thing, is that um, media within the media sector i think one of the things that we are calling for and and i think patience young has been on this internal peer review internal introspection mm. within the media sector is very important i mean the media is not without blemish there are certain things fundamental things that haven't been done right but we are saying that because we have opted for self regulation we must do it ourselves rather than somebody else getting into that space so so the media sector must come together and ensure that uh, Uh, you know looking at the anchorage of the constitution in terms of uh, you know media freedom we must be able to guard that space you know thirdly i'm devo devoting this day the marking of the world press pre freedom day and this is fundamental because it's the 30th anniversary of the of, of the windock declaration uh, to the remembrance of a number of colleagues in kenya who have lost their lives in the line of duty i'll mention just a few of them one is francis nyaruri who was killed Uh, you know in june 2019 and whose you know the the, you know, the 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 issue has not been conclusively dealt with through the courts and so on and the suspicion was that uh, security agencies were involved in the death we have the case of john kitui who was killed in 2015 in april in, in uh, you know in eldoret we have never had a conclusion uh, or conclusive investigations into those kinds of cases we have the case of bernard wesonga we have the case of of john masha we have the cases of a number of journalists i'm devoting this day to remembering them and many other journalists who also suffered even during the kanu regime you know because then uh, if we are complaining about a narrowing civic space or assault on the media then we expect that many more people could suffer so we must remain vigilant absolutely we yeah. must remain vigilant olo janak zubeda kanano dr haran mwangi eric dwar patience younger thank you so much folks nimekuletea form ya kuingia keg eh eh sawa <laughs> thank you for hosting thank us you school, yeah, thank you so much yeah. Yeah. really appreciate it yeah. some wise words from some pretty wise people always remain vigilant that's why they call us the fourth estate right
always remain vigilant. Mm. Thanks so much for watching JK Live. Remember, every Wednesday, it's all about those three letters on the keyboard that follow each other. JKL. Check on your keyboard. JKL. JKL. Yeah. <laughs> Take that to Thank the KG. You. Who knew that one day I would tweet about a, a my competitor? He <laughs> 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 is here. You see that? You see that? You see that? Jeff, you need to talk about uh, hemorrhage in the media and transition. Perhaps that should be the next topic. The next topic mm. is when you guys come next. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, we'll you, you will soon be treated as a dinosaur only. internally here because of the young people that are around you. Mm. Thanks so much for being a part of the show, folks. Mm. Good night, good luck. God bless Kenya and our media. Yes. All right. <laughs>